Before I begin, I just want to say I don't have any extra information on the release of the iPhones. I don't have any insider information about it. I'm just really making this video because I want to talk about the subject. This is the time of year when countless <laughs> uh, tech YouTubers uh, jump on the bandwagon and start talking about the potential release of the iPhone. This is all the free marketing, I suppose, that, uh, that Apple get. The excitement builds and then in September we get the release of a new phone. I mean, bloody hell, it's just another phone. But it's a, it, is, it is a big deal. And uh, as I've sort of said in the past on, uh, on videos, I, I work in the mobile phone industry. Um, that is part of what I do as my day job. Uh, and so I don't tend to talk about phones too much uh, on my channel because I don't really like to mix the two. But it is always interesting and you know there's always uh, chit chit chat and stuff at work when these things happen because it's a big deal. It's a big deal for us as a company. So as per standard web stuff it looks like we're going to get three new varieties of the phone. Again I stress I don't I'm not I don't know anything about this personally. I'm only going on um, information that's available online. I was watching the video that um, MKBHD put out a couple of days ago and he was talking about there being probably three variants of the iPhone 10 or the iPhone 10 or 10s or well, it's not going to be the 11 is it because this is a this is a um, single year so we're not going to get the iPhone 11 yet. So whatever these are called, Anyway, we currently have the iPhone 10 and we have the 8 and the 8 Plus. So I don't know if they're bit binning off the 8 Plus. The 8 Plus is the phone that I use. I'm not due for an upgrade and I have no intention of upgrading Upgrading at this time. I'm happy with it. But yeah, so what is there probably going to be? So you get your standard 10, which is your sort of small, much smaller than the 8 Plus OLED display. And then apparently there's going to be one down from that in a number of different colors. So I remember, remember a while ago they released the C, was it the 5C? And that was done in kind of colors, much cheaper, much more available to, uh, you know, your sort of younger customers, I suppose, when parents are buying their kids phones for the first time. I, I well, I don't know, for, I don't know at all, but I kind of think that maybe they wouldn't be buying them a thousand pound phone. Anyway, yeah, so you've got this 10 um, more basic version, which maybe they'll call a 10C or something in the same way as they did in the past, or, um, or a 10 Lite, I think they called it on the video that I was watching. So yeah, so you've got your, you've got your 10 here, you've got your 10, uh, sorry, you've got your 10 Lite, your 10 s standard, and then there's going to be a, potentially going to be a bigger variety, which is a screen, that is, um, the phone itself is probably about the same size as the 8 Plus, I think. But of course, it's going to have this sort of thin bezels and stuff like that, which uh, is, yeah, I mean, that's nice. I find the 8 Plus is a really nice size in my hands. I have fairly large hands, I guess. And uh, I, I like that size of phone. So to have that with screen going to the edge, that'd be good. I'd, en I'd enjoy that. I mean, not a reason to change my phone at all, but... Um, uh, and I think the cheaper version, so the 10C or whatever, is also going to be an LCD display. But I, you, I, I look at the OLED, and I do, the OLED displays are nice. There's no, no, no question of that. But uh, the LCDs on, on Apple phones, on iPhones, have always been really good. The color representation on the LCDs have, are, are, are brilliant. I, they just look fantastic. I can kind of... I can render a video or I can process a photo on a, on my color color calibrated monitor over there send it to my phone and the two look absolutely identical uh, and that's quite reassuring uh, because I do see a lot of OLED displays particularly on for example the Samsung where the colors are way way too saturated they're all over the place and I don't really like it yeah they're nice and bright and very vivid and clear but 
and the blacks are very black, of course, that's what you get with OLED, but the, uh, the actual color representation I find to be a bit over the top. Again, just my opinion. So yeah, so as far as the new iPhones are concerned, probably three of them. Now, when the, when the 10 came out last year, and this is going back to work again now, uh, we were, uh, because the price of the phone is, goes up, of course, the, the subsidy that the customer puts in, the actual amount of money that the customer has to put in, either initially, uh, people can buy the phone up, out up front, of course, but if they're getting a contract, the prices of those contracts naturally go up. And when we started seeing the first kind of 80, 90, 100 pound contracts, it was just like, wow, this is unbelievable that people will, are willing to spend a hundred pounds a month on an iPhone, you know, to have a mobile phone. Now, of course, having a mobile phone is, is essential today. You know, everybody needs, a, well, everybody in who's, anyone who's doing kind of work or um, just wants to be in contact with anything really these days needs a mobile phone, but you don't need a 1,000 pound mobile phone. Uh, I, so there's an argument to say, right, if you pay, if you're paying £30 a month or £40 a month for a contract and you're making money from that, then of course that's, you know, that makes sense to have that. But £100 a month, we were really shocked at that time, but people buy them, you know, there's people pay that amount. People are willing to shell out that much money every month. I think for anybody, unless you're earning huge, huge amounts of cash, uh, you know, unless you've got a uh, an income of probably like, you know, 150, 200 grand a year and upwards, a hundred pounds a month is still a lot of money. I think even, you know, for anyone, a hundred pounds a month is still a lot of money because you kind of think what else you could spend it on. Anyway, the fact that this iPhone 10 Plus or iPhone 10 Super or whatever, I don't know what they're going to call it, is going to be premium, it's going to be another sort of top of the range. It's going to push all those iPhone 10 users and they're going to be like, oh my God, I haven't got the best phone. I can't show off the best phone to my friends anymore. Uh, and there's going to be a better phone. And with that comes a higher price tag. Apple have clearly made the right decisions because if you look at them, you know, they've recently become the first company uh, to be valued at one trillion dollars. The first time that's ever happened. I mean, that's just amazing, isn't it? You know, they they sort of placed their bets and they said, right, we're going to release a phone which we know fewer people are going to buy. Let's be honest here. The num when it comes to numbers, it's still phones like the iPhone SE and the iPhone 7. Uh, they are still big sellers. They're still made and they're still sold. So don't think that when these new phones come out, all the rest of them stop selling. That isn't how it works. The SE and the 7s and whatever, they're still big sellers because they're lower cost and that's what people want to pay and want to and can afford. But this new phone will come out and we now will have a phone at a thousand, twelve hundred pound price tag. Apple knew that people would buy less of them or fewer people would buy them but the higher price tag makes up for that. And this is just pushing it to yet another level. So it really makes me wonder what kind of price tag are these um, monthly tariffs gonna have on them, the, the monthly contracts, what price tag are they gonna have on them? It's, uh, it's just amaz amazing industry how quickly things, uh, things change as far as pricing and what have you is concerned. I think the disappointing side of the industry is the fact that the actual phones haven't really changed that much. There isn't, there's nothing particularly revolutionary going on. And I always say this um, whenever I have conversations with people about this, and I kind of always say like, you know, although you can add features and you can add nice little extras and things, unless we have our next, you know, the huge step change in technology where somebody invents a battery that lasts for 20 days or something, or uh, put, probably put a load of charger businesses, <laughs> uh, charger companies out of business. Uh, but, you know, some fundamental change around how the technology is done, then they're probably going to stay pretty much the same, at least for the time being. So we're going to continue getting videos from people talking about the fact that, uh, 
the phone's got a notch on them on the top and and that's people don't like it like wow i don't really don't care whether it has a notch on the top or not oh my god they've managed to shave off an extra 0.1 of a millimeter off off the bezel and now it's a little bit closer to the edge again when i when you work with these things every day and when you um are looking at data every day that relates to these sort of handsets and stuff those kind of things are just so meaningless they're just so sort of uh, but they, yeah sure that you can get excited about them and you get excited about product launches i get excited about product if, if someone released a new camera i'd get excited about it you know but i just think yeah they're releasing potentially three new phones and is it that exciting well you can bet it will be because the hype around it and the fact that i'm making a video about it like this not you know and that's me you know i'm making a video to almost whinge about the fact that the phones are coming out but i'm still making a video talking about it anyway i just wanted to have a chat about the fact that we're getting those probably getting those three phones that's the rumor at the moment it's not going to happen now until september but um yeah this video will be out of date in a couple of weeks that's okay so let's see what happens and what do you think is is the phone industry exciting to you do you see it as are you willing to spend part with a hundred pounds a month for a phone contract uh do you prefer to buy your hardware up front and uh, just stick a sim in from a, from a phone provider how does it work for you, you know, I'm, I'm, I think I'm more along those lines really I prefer to um, I prefer to have the hardware I just prefer it to be my own hardware and then I'll deal with the phone company side of things separately from that um, from that hardware but that's just me I mean that's just the way I prefer to do it and it all depends on how much funds you, what the funds you've got available but um, yeah surely a hundred pounds a month is a lot of money to you. Don't know. Maybe it's not. Maybe you're. Maybe you're rich. I'm unfortunate. I'm not in that situation. I'm not loaded, and a hundred pounds is is a lot of money for me to shell out just for a phone. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'd be really interested to hear what you have to say on that. And if you've managed to stay listening for eleven minutes, twelve minutes, well, good on you. Sorry, just been waffling on. See you soon. Bye. Thank you.